Hello, everyone. It's Charlton. Please subscribe to my channel. Tap the notification bell. I'd appreciate it. I'd appreciate it majorly. So, um, you know, there's new details about the Jerry Falwell scandal, you know, of him supposedly liking to watch his, his wife have sex with this pool boy, Giancarlo Grande, according to Giancarlo Grande, you know, in the affair. I don't want to go over through everything because it just goes on and on, you know. But one element of this, you know, I mean, this is going on everywhere. Throughout the 2016 and prior to the 2016 campaign, you know, there's this crazy, crazy person who thinks that um, Trump and Hillary fixed the 2016 election and that, tr that Hillary lost the election on purpose, whether she did that willingly or she was coerced or whatever. I don't care, you know. Um, that's what I believe. And uh, every single story that comes out, I believe it more. I mean, it's almost, it's just, uh, it's just like it'd be impossible if it wasn't true. Um, so, and this is the, the New Yorker story about the, the meeting in Trump Tower office, Trump's office in 2015, February 2015, where David Pecker was there and Michael Cohn was there. Actually, David Pecker had just left or was just leaving when Sam Nunberg entered the office you know, and actually Sam Nunberg saw David Pecker, you know, leaving the office. And when he got in there, there was a cover story on Trump's desk for the National Enquirer. That's why David Pecker was there to tell him about it before, you know, before it ran whenever, Monday or – and uh, about Epstein and, uh, and, and, and Prince Edward and Virginia Roberts Gouffre and the photos of, of them and so forth. And when Sam Nunberg got into the office, according to him, Trump said to him, Something to the effect of "Don't tell anybody," but Michael and Michael Cohen is sitting there. But you know, David Pecker said that the photos that Epstein has of Bill Clinton are even worse, worse than worse than Prince Andrew. You know, and I don't need to read at all that. And this is this is February 2015. This is weeks before he would make his appearance at CPAC on stage with Sean Hannity during you know doing a lightning round. And one of the questions that came up was Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton. And he referenced this. He referenced Epstein and the island and that Bill Clinton's got lots of troubles because of that, because of that, you know, what may or may not uh, exist, photos, whatever. So, but part of this Jerry Falwell scandal, as well as there's more details out there in terms of Specifics provided by Giancarlo Granda. And by this point, because yesterday, Jerry Falwell went back and forth. First he resigned, then he didn't resign, then he resigned. And Benny, by this point, it's pretty much concrete that he has, he's out as the uh, president of Liberty University. Um, but more and more details have come out. And there's probably more. You know, there's probably video. You know, there's probably photos and other stuff that maybe we will or will never will or will not ever see. I don't know. <clears throat> but, um, you know, pretty much even conservative pundits are, you know, are, are not defending Jerry Falwell Jr. And they're saying he's got lots of explaining to do, you know. So some of the newer stuff, well, one, the audio of the conversation that was reported on in the Reuters stories out there. And if you want, I'll play that for you. And it basically just indicates that even though Jerry Falwell was basically saying, you know, saying that it's putting this all on his wife and his wife had his wife had an affair that he had nothing to do with, you know, and that made him so depressed that he laid eight, lost 80 pounds in the audio conversation, which I believe is 2018, which is basically near the very end of their 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 6 7 year relationship from 2012 to 2018 and started when the pool boy was supposedly 20 years old working as a pool boy at a hotel. That's where they first met. And he says the wife approached him. I'll get to that in a second. But in the audio conversation, it seems as though, you know, and he's talking about Giancarlo is talking about his relationship. So is, so is with Becky. And Becky is sort of complaining that she's upset. You know, like it, it bothers her to hear about Giancarlo's all of his previous, you know, other relationships or other relationships he had formed, you know, on Tinder or whatever. And it hurts her feelings. And it, she's trying to, you know, come to terms with it and be, be mature about it, but that it does bother. Her. And he, um, Jerry Falwell, chimes in and says, you know, you're making her jealous. You know, I mean, I'm paraphrasing. I'll probably play it for you. It's like a minute and a half long. But it clearly indicates, 
you know, that, or it sure seems to indicate that Jerry Falwell Jr. seemed to be just fine with the affair between the two. And, and again, you can almost draw, connect the dots that Giancarlo is claiming, I don't even know if I said that, that said that, you know, Jerry Falwell liked to watch. I mean, he, he, he makes other, he gets a little bit more specific. He talks about the very first time he met Becky at a hotel where she approached him. He was talking to girls his own age and he was working at the time. And she apparently says, you know, something to the fact that, you know, you really need a mature, you know, an experienced woman. And invites him up to uh, her room and they're basically getting more and more intimate and just about, just right before they're about to sort of seal the deal and begin uh, it, real intimate relations, have sex and stuff. She says there's just kind of one other thing, you know, my, my, my husband likes to watch. And then Jerry Falwell apparently comes out from behind somewhere, or comes from another room into the room where they are, maybe from the bathroom into the, into the room where they are, in a, in, a, in a Speedo. And I assume proceeds to, to do just that, watch while they have sex. And then the, from that point on, they did it routinely, multiple times a year, you know, in hotels in Miami, New York, in their home in Virginia. And, um, you know, sometimes actually he says he, he would use, uh, Jerry would watch from video. You know, I guess they would put, I don't know, the phone there, you know, maybe FaceTime. That's what I mean. There, I, I would be shocked if there's not video somewhere of this, you know. But who knows? Who knows? Um, there's also supposedly, um, uh, um, and I'm just kind of going by memory. I don't need to read through these articles one at a time in this specific exact quotes. But there's supposedly a screenshot of from Giancarlo's phone where he says he's FaceTiming Becky. And this is actually near, I think near the, that's, that's what this is right here. That, and that's in 2019. So that's after the, that's after the relationship was over, but she's, she's naked in the screenshot. And according to, or, or that's how Giancarlo describes it. And however, whatever context or reference frame of reference Giancarlo gave to Reuters. He made them to believe. He made them believe that what he was saying was accurate. I mean, that's how it's described in this. I'll read that paragraph. But he's having a FaceTime with Becky, who's naked, and supposedly um, somewhere in the in the I guess in the screenshot, Jerry Falwell is in the distance behind a door, picking his head out. You know, something like that. It says the material Granda showed Reuters includes screenshots from what Granda said was a FaceTime conversation he had with the Falwells, both of them, in 2019. During the call, Granda said Becky was naked, and as as the two discussed the relationship, while Jerry peeked from behind a door, Reuters was able to verify Granda's description of the screenshots. So, let me play the audio real quick, and then I'll... I mean, basically, what I'm, what I'm, one other piece that I'm getting to, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll read the first encounter from from the Daily Mail, which is actually taking it from Politico, but they kind of make it easier for me to read. Um, is that you know, some conservative pun? There's a dude over at the American Conservative, the Washington Examiner, wrote about it as well. And originally, Jerry Falwell went to the Washington Examiner on Sunday to give his per, his own statement to try to preempt this, you know. And uh, there's lots of stuff going on. Believe me, I have gotten to know this so well, you know, and how these people understand media and medium so good. Um, and they just know how to, to manipulate messaging that, that goes out to the masses. So Jerry Wall went. To, Jerry Wall Fall, Jerry Wall Fall Jr. went to the Washington Examiner to give and preempt this, so they would get reported on and videos would get made of it. Hundreds of them, you know. Before Reuters actually, Reuters story went out there, and I started like you know, and others start making a different video, whatever. But um, but even the Washington Examiner is you know writing follow ups where. You know, they, they say Jerry Falwell has got explaining to do, for sure. And somebody over the American Conservatives basically pointing to the primary where Jerry Falwell was all completely positioned to um, endorse Ted Cruz, the evangelical, you know, uh, shining knight. You know, I'm a Ted Cruz guy. I was a huge Ted Cruz su supporter, and the evangelicals turned on him in a second. You know, the moment Trump basically came along and was, frankly, you know, just uh, uh, more to their liking in terms of, I guess, he's, you know, white for one thing. You know, he's like Anglo-Saxon, whatever. And I am, dude. Okay? But I don't care. Um, but um, 
you know, and it and it just seems as though uh, some veiled threats were 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 leveled at Jerry Royal Fall, Fallwell Jr. about some photographs that might be in somebody's possession of his wife and so forth. You know, I'll read it, and it, it involves Tom Ar Arnold. You know, Roseanne Barr's former husband and comedian. A lot of comedians in this story. A lot of comedians in this story. And I'm not even going to bother trying to get into that. But believe me, it's there's something to that. And I, I know more than just it's saying that there's something to that. But there definitely is. And, um, you know, because supposedly John Tom Arnold, I think, had these photos or something like that. But once that conversation got played on a podcast or something, you know, Jerry Falwell Jr. abruptly changed his position and, and endorsed Donald Trump. And this is just more of the same. Of Donald Trump basically just had to get through the primary. He had to win the primary and he would win the election because he had Hillary right where and, and Bill right where he wanted him. Whatever. Here's the audio of this. A lot of whatevers. That's all right. No problemo, dude. I'm not trying to do that. Like a week ago, I was in tears for a whole freaking day. He's like, I hooked up with this girl at dinner, and then I got her an Uber. And I'm like, just completely depressed. You don't, you don't care Maybe about Maybe the more you tell me, the more I'll get you. You don't care about I, me anymore, Becky. Huh? You don't care about me anymore. Uh, yeah, really? <laughs> yeah, obviously. I just t I just tell you because you're my best friend. So. I know. I'm trying to be okay and I'm like accepting that position, but I'm kind of too. So yeah. Okay. I'm 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 trying to. I've changed a lot. I've moved on. I've matured. Yep. Matured. Yes. I'm not as crazy as I used to be. I would think. I don't think. No, so not. yeah, this is just, huh? No, you're, you're perfect. You, yeah. Yeah, you're gotta fine. Yeah, keep that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is just new. I don't know. The whole, I was always in the, you know, even before when you weren't dating somebody, it just kind of threw me for a loop. So, that, there it is. That's the, uh. That's the audio, and there's only a little portion of, uh, you know, Jerry Falwell Jr. in there, but he's listening in the whole time. He seems to be very, this is 2019, very aware uh, and of their of their relationship, and uh, seems as though it was acceptable, totally, you know, whatever. So, ugh, another whatever. So, um, you know, this is Giancarlo's account of the first time they met super quick. I want to just kind of wrap this up. I think you get where I'm going with this, you know, and then quickly go over to the American conservative to read what that person had said about Jerry Falwell Jr. and Michael Cohen and how, how Jerry Falwell Jr. Uh, mysteriously flipped from being a Tread Ted Cruz supporter to fully, uh, fully backing, you know, uh, Tr Donald Trump, um, you know, um, during the during the primary of the 2016 election. And, and, and Giancarlo Granda basically talks about in his political piece where in this Politico piece where he's speaking to another outlet, I think as of yesterday or last night, you know, that, um, you know, he had meetings with Jerry Falwell and the Falwells leading up to Trump's announcement of, of running for president and that there was a change, you know, and that's where they wanted to dissolve their relationship with him. That's when they first supposedly offered to buy him out of this Miami hostel that they all three went into business together. And I don't think it was, it was Jerry Walt Falwell Jr. and his son. I think his son's name is Troy and, and Giancarlo, uh, uh, Giancarlo Granda. And Giancarlo Granda, even though he's described as a pool boy, that's what he was when they first met. You know, he's now, um, he's now their, or is or was their business partner. But, um, you know, 
I don't I don't necessarily think he's in any he's desperate for money. I mean he 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 seems as though he comes from a pretty decent family. You know, she referenced his girlfriend that he was dating. I believe he's still dating her and she's in law school and she's attractive too, for sure. And um, you know, and he went to he graduated from uh he graduated from Georgetown and got a, a, a um got a masters from there in some kind of some kind of real estate major. <clears throat> You know, Georgetown's an exclusive uh, uh, Jesuit school. It's like almost like a Ivy League. I went to a Jesuit school. Georgetown's extremely competitive and very difficult to get into. So, you know, he's not some, you know, uh, reject just trying to scrape money off of people. Uh, you know, at least that's not my impression. But so let me just continue real quickly. During This is him saying, during my work shift at Fountain Blue Hotel in March 2012, I was ch chatting with some girls my age, 20 at the time, Beck, and Becky said, those girls don't know what, you're, uh, what they're doing. You need someone with more experience, he said. That's what he says. The Becky said, the pair went back to her hotel room at her suggestion, he claimed, which is where he says she brought up Jerry, the head of Liberty University at the time, and said he liked to watch. She goes, but one thing. And I'm like, okay. And she's like, my husband likes to watch. And just then he comes out and he's wearing a Speedo, he said. Over the course of the next six years, he claims he and Becky had sex several times a year in hotel rooms in Miami, but also at the Falwell's home in Virginia. He enjoyed watching us in person and also remotely through video cameras. He also listened to our phone calls, Rhonda claimed, etc., etc. So, but over at the Jerry, uh, the Politico piece, it basically. It's ta it talks about how Gronda real, uh, noticed a significant change in how they approached him and felt about this relationship as, um, as right before Falwell uh, endorsed or r right before Trump ran for president, announced his, you know, that he was going to run for president in the Re Republican primary in June 2015. There was a meeting one month before that where the fall was offered to buy him out of this business they all three went into this Miami hostel. A month after Falwell offered to buy out Grande, uh, Grande's share of the hostel, Trump launched his bid for, for office, Falwell. Falwell, to the surprise of many evangelicals, started talking Trump up on the campaign trail. Falwell became the first major evangelical leader to endorse Trump. Actually, earlier in the article, it, it, it talks about that exact meeting very quickly. So it says, then, then at a meeting at Lowe's Miami Beach Hotel in May 2015, that's one month before Trump uh, announced his bid for president, where he came down the escalator, escalator in June 2015, Falwell surprised Gronda by offering to buy him out. He also mentioned something else that caught Gronda's attention. Donald Trump, he said, was planning to run for president. A somewhat surprising move that would, put, uh, that would place the New York developer among roughly a dozen people contending for the GOP nomination. To Granda, the two events appeared to be connected. Jerry Falwell was trying to remove evidence of his family's ties to Granda in anticipation of getting involved in politics, which could invite greater scrutiny of his activities. But like I said, over at the um, American Conservative, I don't even know the name of this journalist. His name is Rod Dreyer. Dreyer. He writes, you know... Um, it raises, a very, it raises an important question, too, about whether or not Trump, the Trump campaign used knowledge of the, of, of the Falwell's affair to pressure Jerry Jr. to endorse Trump. Former Trump legal fixer Michael Cohen told Tom Arnold that he handled a situation down in Florida in which somebody had some compromising Boudreaux, or Boudreaux? Boudreaux shots of Becky Falwell that he, Cohen, had obtained. Funnily enough, right after that, Jerry Jr., who was lined up to endorse Ted Cruz for president, flip-flopped to Trump. Amazing, eh? So, you know, I bring you back to my original thing, you know, that I say, I, my theory, my very strong theory, extremely strong theory, that Donald Trump managed to get Hillary Clinton to lose the election on purpose. And he's going to get destroyed. Destroyed. You're going to see. You're going to see how the polls, how somehow come out, are, are right this time. They weren't right last time. That's why he always references 2016. And he's been doing it more and more recently. Believe me. I, I, yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's, 
You know, when you get a chance, not many people have done so, but I don't care. I mean, okay, I keep this on my, this is my trailer video because this is, and it's a long video and it's complicated. And if you don't follow politics, it's hard to follow along. But I have been following politics intensely for, for, for 20 years, you know, to the point where we're in between projects right now. But when I'm working on a home, I work, uh, what, whatever, it doesn't matter. I'll, I'll listen 12 hours a day to talk radio, political conservative talk radio, which I don't listen to anymore. I've gotten so sick of their, you know, the relentless just um, butt-kissing of Trump. They do everything Trump. It's just ridiculous. It's pathetic, you know. Um, but this, 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 this is one of the better ones. That's why I put it up there because it's so striking about how Lanny Davis, who's Michael Cohen's attorney or was his attorney, after supposedly Michael Cohen got religion and was all of a sudden, he's writing a book. It's such a farce, you know, pretending to be against Trump. This is like, this is Trump, Trump, it's Trump's MO huge. Is he basically, he controls both, both sides, himself and the opposition. It's just so that he, it's impossible to lose. You know, it's just like controlling Hillary, you know, but in here, it basically lays out how Lanny Davis, who was representing among other things, among many other players, it's a timeline that I go through. Um, Lanny Davis, who was representing Michael Cohen after he supposedly had turned on Trump and had found religion, and now was you know Trump is a liar. Went before the one of the one of the committees at the Senate or the House and said Trump's a liar, and I know Trump, and you know I was wrong, and I'm here to make things right or whatever. Lanny Davis, who called Hillary Clinton his best friend, that's how. Lanny Davis was the legal counsel to President Bill Clinton in the White House, I want to say in 94, um, maybe it was 96 or 96, 4 to 96 when, Trump, when, when Clinton was going through the impeachment hearing. But he, call, he calls himself Hillary Clinton's best friend. I mean, that's, she's his best friend. That's, I think, how he, uh, uh, how he refers to her. And that's how he knew the Clintons. You know, he's a long-time friend of the Clintons, but he met, he was friends with Hillary first in college. He met in law school at Yale. Bill Clinton might have been in Yale Law School too, but that's how the relationship began. But so the very best friend of Hillary Clinton in this video and somebody who's representing Michael Cohen at the time, you know, um, whenever it was, you can refer to the timeline, um, who at the time, Michael Cohen, was now claiming to be basically enemies of Trump, is offering, according to Lev Parnas, the Ukrainian businessman, you know, offering to help uh, the Trump team, you know, that would meet at Trump International Hotel in Washington, D.C. periodically. The Trump team was, you know, John Solomon, Lev Parnas, Igor Fruman, um, you know, somebody from the Nunes team, I forget his name, his chief of staff or something like that, and a couple others, you know. Oh, the two, the legal team, the two, the husband-wife legal team, what was their name? <sighs> I forget their names. Joe DeGeneva and Victoria Tunson. Boom! I probably pronounced Joe DeGeneva wrong, whatever. So, um, but check that out. Yeah, Hillary Clinton, in my opinion, my very extremely, I have extreme confidence in this theory that Hillary Clinton lost the election on purpose, okay? So that's the story there, man. That is the story there, man. Thanks for watching my videos. Please subscribe to my channel. Give me a like down below. I'll see you in the next video. Later, man.